Welcome to another cup of refreshing water. Have you ever wondered what you're going to do in heaven? I think a lot of us have, and there are some scriptures telling us some things, and that's what I want to share with you today. And I also have a, one more question, and that is, let me find it, uh, will the people that are in heaven see what's going on here on the earth? We'll answer that question too. And then after that, I only have one more lesson on heaven, and that is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we're going to know all that the Bible has to tell us, or I should say all the scriptures I could find that the Bible has to tell us about heaven. So welcome to the refreshing water. Here's a cut for you. I'm Pam Fussell, my husband and I pastor First Assembly of God in Dallas, Georgia. What are we going to be doing in heaven? We know that there's continual worship and praise and singing. That's found in Revelations 4 and 8. Whenever the living creatures give glory, the 24 elders bow down and with their crowns before God and all worship. I plan to look over and see you there. Like, <laughs> we are here. Nehemiah 9 and 6d says, Multitudes in heaven worship you. Psalms 103, 20, 21. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you who obey his word, all heavenly host, you servants who do his will. Praise the Lord. But that's not all we're going to do there. We're definitely not sitting on a cloud playing a harp. <laughs> we're going to fellowship a lot with each other. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Then we shall see face to face. Now in part, then I shall know fully, even as I'm known. That scripture is saying that when we get to heaven, though we'll be in a, our soul and our spirit, it still has the same form, the same look, and so we're going to know each other as we're known. Now what it does not say is, will we look young again? Will babies stay babies? Um... If we were old, will we go back to being a teenager? It doesn't say. And it really won't matter. We're going to have a new body. We're going to be strong and not sick, not hurt. So the main thing is I want you to know we're going to know each other. I don't think we're going to remember anything bad. Maybe we'll remember good. I don't know. But that's going to be really wonderful. And if we're in a mansion, we're going to go over to each other's mansion. If we're in a room, we'll go to each other's room. Um, yeah. We are going to play instruments. Revelations 5, 8, and 9. We know that uh, each one of the 24 elders each had a harp. And they sang a new song with words. And that was found in verse 9. But we're going to be singing, even you that don't like to sing, you're going to be singing. And you that think your voice is horrible, and maybe it is, you're going to be singing in beautiful tones, beautiful songs to the Lord. And we'll be playing instruments. I'm thinking if the 24 elders got to play a harp, I think we can play instruments. Uh, it does. There's not a scripture that says, and we will get to play instruments. It's something I take from this scripture, and I think perhaps we will. This is what I hope. I hope I get to learn how to play the violin and the piano. I would love to just sit down and play and worship the Lord, and maybe I will. Maybe I'll get to learn them there. What instrument would you like to learn how to play? Here is a list of instruments. You know, God created music. And he, he helped mankind figure out how to make instruments. So here's some instruments that were listed in the Bible. Trumpets that are called shofars. And they're not the trumpet like we know. The shofar is a big horn. Um, 
The saw tree is a, was a ten-stringed instrument. I guess it's something like a harp or a harp. Now the saw tree and the harp must be different. A timbrel, which is like a tambourine. Uh, so we're not going to just be standing there, praise God, hallelujah. It's going to be joyous music worshipful music, playing of instruments, everyone singing and rejoicing. I found a dance. I found it in the Bible. Uh, no, it was in a Jewish historical book about all the different dances that the Jewish have when they're celebrating and rejoicing. And there's not a scripture that says that we're going to get to dance in heaven. So I want to make that clear, but it's something that I hope that we get to do when we're in heaven as part of the rejoicing and worshiping of God to twirl and dance before the Lord. It says we're going to rule and reign with Christ and that's going to be during the thousand year millennium. Revelations 20 and 6d They will be priests of God in Christ and will rule with Him for a thousand years. So those are some of the things that I know. Um, I have other things, and I want to make it clear, these are just other things that I hope is going to happen in heaven, but I have no scriptures for them. But I wanted to talk about them. Like, we're going to get to talk to Jesus as much as we want to. He's going to talk... To us, we're going to listen to him. He's going to listen to us. I hope, I hope, I hope that we're going to get to keep learning in heaven. All about God, all about Jesus. Just learn whatever God wants us to. I hope there will be a way to do that. I think there will be. I can't imagine not, but no scripture. And then here's just some ones that... I think about. I hope to fly without airplane. <laughs> I hope to swim underwater without needing air. Um, I'm looking forward to going to people and thanking them for helping me get to heaven. I had a Sunday school teacher when I first started walking to church by myself, seven years old, and every time she would read from the Bible and talk about Jesus, I would cry. And she'd ask me, what's the matter? Nothing. I think even then the Spirit of God was, was work. I know He was. I can't even think. He was working in me, talking to me. And he, every time He did, it just stirred my heart so much. Um, I would like to find her. I don't even know her name. But I'll know it there. And I want to go up to her and thank her for being my first Sunday school teacher that was teaching me about the Bible and about Christ. I hope to be able to make gifts for people, just people that I pastored, just because I want to make them a gift because I love them. Um, I hope there's a place that we can kind of like watch a video about the different Bible stories, key in any Bible story and actually get to see what it was like. I hope we get to do that. Um, I hope there's a way we can key in and see all the different times that God sent his angel to protect us and we didn't even know anything about it or and our loved ones. I hope to talk to great men and women of the Bible and great men and women of God to talk to them and see what their relationship was and is with them so I can learn from them. Yes, I want to continue learning, learning, learning about God. I hope to get to dance with Jesus. I hope I get to dance in happy groups. I hope I get to play and race around with everybody. Okay. That's some of my... I don't know what word to use. It's just I'm looking forward to it. And I hope I've stirred things in your heart that you're looking forward to it too. 
And then the next question I said I would answer. Will we see, when we're in heaven, will we see what's going on on the earth and with our loved ones? I have to tell you first, there's no Pacific scripture. What there is is the parable of the rich man that died and went to hell and the poor man Lazarus that was in that was in paradise in the bosom of Abraham. That's another title for it. And that man that was in hell, he said, um, go and send somebody to go back to earth and tell my brothers about this place so they won't come. And uh, so he could not see his brothers. He just remembered that his brothers didn't walk with God and would be coming to hell too. And he didn't want that to happen. So we have that story to go by. But I said there, there's not a Pacific scripture, but we do, we have already read the scripture that says we won't be sad, cry, or mourn. So if we were looking down on earth and seeing our loved ones walk away from God or not accepting God, or if we saw them get murdered, I mean, we would cry and mourn. So I personally do not think that we're going to look down on the earth and see anything that's going on. Um, plus, we're cleansed from sin perfectly. Right now, we live in a sinful world, and sin is everywhere, and it does affect us. But when we go to heaven, we will be totally, completely cleansed from all sin. So why would we get to look down on the earth and, and see, oh, oh my, this one's committing adultery with that one, and that one's about to rape that one, and this one is committing murder. Why would we be able to look down on on the earth and see the sin. We're washed free of it. See my point? There's no scripture that says we can talk to our loved ones from heaven, uh, nor get signs to them. They are there. Okay. Let me stop reading and just talk. Our loved ones We've already determined through scripture that when they die, they go to heaven or hell right then. We wish that we could still talk to them. We wish that we could get signs from them. But once our loved ones have gone to heaven or hell, they are totally consumed in that place that they're at. Unless hell, like the rich man, was remembering his, his brothers and didn't want them to go to hell. But... um. In heaven, they're there. They're so happy. They don't want to come back. Their minds, excuse me, their minds are full of heaven, full of God, full of others. They're not looking down and saying, oh, I miss my wife. Let them, let them go. Let them be happy. And you be happy for them. And that's easy for me to say because I've not lost my husband. It would be hard. It would be very hard. But uh, let's live where we're at. If we're in heaven, we're going to live it to the full. If we're in hell, we're going to live it to the full. All right. It's a short study for today. And then I finish up all of this study on heaven by teaching the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's one last thing I want to tell you about that is going to take place while we're in heaven. When it's going to take place, what it's going to be like. Uh, scriptures tell us about that. So it's going to be a joyous time. And then I will be finished with our study, our complete, as best as I can, study on heaven. So... I really pray for you a lot. I don't know who watches, but I always pray, God, those that you want to hear this, put it in their heart, help them to stumble upon it, 
help him to watch it. So I believe that you're watching according to God's design and plan for you. I pray that the Lord touches your heart deeply, draws you in and causes you to be so hungry for more of him, to discipline you to put the Bible and the Lord first. I promise you, you won't regret it. As some, a person I know, it just gets getting better and better the closer you are to the Lord. So I say for you for today, goodbye and blessings. I love you all.